Hello and a warm welcome to the teaching show. I'm Dr. Poonam Nigam and this course is on process calculation. So uh, in this video we are going to talk about yield and selectivity. So till now whatever uh, we have covered it dealt with only single reactions. Okay. So uh, we learned how to handle a irreversible reaction and a reversible reaction. Now um, what we are going to see today is that if you have more than one reaction then how do you find out the composition of the products okay so for that you define basically two terms okay so let's take an example and then uh, learn from there okay so I'm going to write one equation this I had written uh, yesterday as well which was this is my ethane if it is hydrogenated uh, oh sorry okay it is decomposing let's say hydrogenation one we will take later on so ethane it is giving you ethylene okay now if this reaction is taking place then what can happen is that once the hydrogen is formed it can again react with more of the reactant and then it can form methane okay so this is one of the competing reactions make sure that your reactions are balanced okay so this is my competing reaction it may also happen that this reactant it combines see in this reaction it has combined with this product okay and over here it can also combine with this product so I can also have one more reaction which goes like this uh, C2H6 re reacts with ethylene which is formed and it gives you C3H6 plus CH4 okay so these are some of the competing reactions but our desired reaction is this one because we are trying to produce ethylene okay so um, what you want to do is that you try to set up conditions in such a way that these side reactions are suppressed and more and more of your desired product is formed okay so there are two things which we use um, one is selectivity and the other is yield in order to tell you how much each of the reaction has progressed okay but what is the problem with these um, side reactions first of all if some unwanted side reactions are taking place then less amount of your desired product will be formed okay or if you want to produce at the same level then you will have to use more of the reactants in any way that is loss of money okay so uh, let's see uh, first of all the simplest one we will take that is selectivity and it is defined as the moles of desired product upon moles of undesired products okay so moles of desired upon undesired that is your selectivity very simple to form suppose any reaction is taking place and I have um, whatever say uh, 5 moles of desired product is formed and I have 2 moles of methane which is formed then my selectivity will be 5 by 2 that is 2.5 so this concept is easy to understand let's look at the yield so when we talk about yield we say that yield is the moles of the product which is formed okay so and what product is that it is the desired product so moles of the desired product which are formed divided by the uh, amount of that product which would have been formed if the reaction goes to completion and um, none of the side reactions are taking place okay so we are going to divide it by you can write this definition moles that would have been formed see this is a hypothetical case okay so moles that would have been formed if no side reactions okay if no side reactions and limiting reactant reacts completely okay now when I say limiting reactant reacts completely that means I am saying that the reaction goes to completion okay and no side reactions are taking place that means that this is the maximum amount of the desired product you can have 
So your yield is basically mole of desired product upon maximum number of moles of the desired product which you can produce. Okay. Uh, now sometimes it is also given as fractional yield. Okay. In that case, it will be given as a ratio of these two. So this is a ratio, right? So it will always come out to be a value which is less than one. Okay. Now if you have two reactions which are taking place, let's see. Uh, okay, I will take an example of this one only. I am just erasing this third equation. Okay. Now let's just use these two equations. Okay. And try to find out what is the. Okay. So now my uh, this thing is. Yesterday in the last video what we had seen was that if you want to find out how many number of moles of product have been formed we use the concept of um, uh, extent of reaction. Okay. Now you have two reactions. So you can define two extents of reaction. Okay. Let's say I have extent of reaction zeta 1 for this and zeta 2 for this. Okay. Now also let me mark my components. So this is 1. This is 2, this is 3, these are repetitive, this is the new component. So I am marking that this is component 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Now, next what we did was that by using these extents of reaction zeta, we wrote equations for the final number of molecules which will be formed based on number of initial moles which were present. Okay. If it, this is component 1, then L10 plus nu i into zeta. Okay. This was the equation which we used. But now you have two reactions. Okay. In that case, what will happen is that the change in number of moles will be because of these two reactions. You remember n1 minus n0 that is nothing but that is equal to the change in the number of moles. Okay. So now your number of moles are changing because of these two reactions. So I have to add the change in the number of moles because of first reaction and because of second reaction. Okay. So how will I do? N1 minus N10 that is the change in the number of moles that will be equal to nu1. Let's say for the reaction 1 I am writing zeta1 and then I will have nu1 and zeta2. Okay. Now these nu1 these are the stoichiometric coefficients. So they will be different for different reactions in this it happens to be the same. But okay, if you have reactions in which your stoichiometric coefficients are different, then you will have to specify which one you are using. Okay, so I will uh, introduce one more letter over here in the subscript. This refers to my reaction 1. This refers to my reaction 2. Okay, so in general, if I have j number of reactions, then I can write this equation as for any species i, ni is equal to ni0 plus summation over all j nu ij zeta j okay so it's very easy any number of reactions two or three or four now you know how to handle it you have to just know the zeta or the extent of reaction this you know from your reactions ni0 is given okay so you can find out your final number of moles okay now uh, let's put some uh, product uh, values okay let's put some numerical values to how much is getting produced how much do we enter in the reactor and something like that and get a feel of this problem in a more way better way okay so let's say i have a reactor now in this reactor i am putting in uh, 100 moles of feed but my uh, ethylene is 85 percent so my ethylene is basically uh, 85 moles and the remaining are inerts okay so inerts are 15 moles now it has been asked to find out what is the product composition okay given that all these two reactions are taking place okay now I have how many components 1 2 3 this is 4 and inerts is 5th okay so n2 n3 n4 n5 I have five components. Inerts, they don't take part in the reaction. So whatever is going in will be coming out. So I know 
inerts are 15 moles. Okay? Now, I can write down the equation for these four in terms of zeta 1 and zeta 2. Let's do that. So, n1 will be equal to n10 and uh, summation of nu i into zeta. What is nu over here? Stoichiometric coefficient is minus 1 multiplied with zeta. Stoichiometric coefficient is again minus 1 multiplied with zeta. Okay. What is n2? It is only being produced here and this is by reaction 1. What is the stoichiometric coefficient 1? So, it is zeta 1. Okay. Now, what is N3? Uh, N3 is hydrogen. It is being used, uh, produced over here and used over here. Okay. So, I am going to write it as uh, over here your nu is plus 1. So, zeta 1. Uh, don't mind my zetas. Okay. So, zeta 1. And over here it is getting consumed. Over here your stoichiometric coefficient is now minus 1. So, minus into zeta 2. So, N3 is equal to zeta 1 minus zeta 2. Now, let us write for the component 4. What is that? Nu is your plus 2 and you are uh, multiplied with what? This is second reaction. So, zeta 2. Okay. So, now you have all the uh, final amounts in terms of only two variables that is zeta 1 and zeta 2. Uh, in my video on the extent of reaction, I told you when there was one reaction, then you can calculate this value of zeta. See, only you have these many number of equations which are available to you. Okay. So, in order to calculate one of this variable that is zeta, you have to know at least one of the final amounts. Okay. So, that you can use any of these equations and find out zeta. But now, I have two unknowns. If you have one reaction, then you need to know only one final amount. If you have two equation, uh, reactions, then you have two unknowns that is zeta 1 and zeta 2. That means you should know what will be the, uh, at least you should know what will be the final amounts of two of the uh, components. Okay. So, in this case, I need to know n1 and n2, n3 and for any two of them in order to calculate zeta 1 and zeta 2. Okay. So, this is a solved problem in Fender. You can go and see there they have done a trick that they have not given directly any of these two values but what they are saying is that they are giving you an extra information your fractional conversion they are giving it is equal to 0.501 okay and further they give that the fractional yield of ethylene that is equal to 0.471 okay so now two uh, process specifications are given okay I can easily use these process specifications to calculate my um, two of these uh, values. Okay. Let's say how are we going to do it. So, this is my fractional yield. Okay. Uh, fine. So, uh, 0 0.501 times 85 that is your, uh, this is fractional conversion. So, 0 0.501 times 85 that is reactive. So, what is not reacting? I told you the fraction which is unreacted is 1 minus F, okay, of the initial amount and that will come out to be equal to whatever is coming out in this product stream, okay. So, whatever the unreacted component, it is coming out over here and I am saying if fractional conversion is F, then the fractional amount which has not reacted is 1 minus F, multiply it with the amount which is entering and then you will get the amount which is coming out in the product stream and which is unreacted. Okay. So, N1 uh, in this way, it comes out to be 42.4 moles. If you do the calculations. Okay. So, N1 we have calculated. Now, I have to use, make use of this condition and find out. Uh, let's see any of these three. Which one we can calculate? Now, fractional yield that is the amount which is produced of ethylene. Where it is getting produced? This is the component 2. An amount of ethylene which is getting produced is N2. So, I am saying the amount which gets produced divided by the maximum amount which can be produced. Okay. Maximum amount which can be produced is when this reaction is not taking place and whole of this uh, C2H6, it converts into your C2H4. 
Now over here you see 1 mole of C2H6 gives you 1 mole of C2H4. If you have 85 moles of C2H6 completely converting without this side reaction, then 85 moles of C2H4 will be formed. Okay? So I have this divided by 85. Yield is given as 0 0.471. If I multiply 85 with this, I get the value of N2 which is approximately equal to 40 moles. Okay? So now you have two of the values N1 and N2. Okay? Now the reaction, uh, now the uh, problem is very simple. N2 is equal to zeta 1 that is equal to 40 moles. So I have the value directly of zeta 1. If I put this value of zeta 1 over here, N1 is 85, zeta 1 is 40. I go and calculate my zeta 2. It comes out to be equal to uh, 2.6 moles. Okay, because I know N1 as well. N1, where it was? See, 42.4. So I am going to put this value, all these values over here. Okay, calculate zeta 2, that is 2.6 moles. So I have zeta 1 and zeta 2. Now the problem just says that you have to calculate the compositions of these. Uh, okay, I will just erase. Now I don't need all this. Okay, I will just keep these equations and the values of zeta 1 and zeta 2. Okay? So I am going to write zeta 2 over here because I have erased it. So, now uh, n1 that was 42.4 we had calculated. Your n2 is 40 moles. You know your n3 is zeta 1 minus zeta 2. So 40 minus uh, 2.6. So that comes out to be 37.4 moles and your N4 is 2 times zeta 2 that is 5.2. Okay and don't forget the fifth component N5 which is 15 moles. So I am going to add 15 to this. To this. So this is the total number of moles which are coming out as product and this total comes out to be 140. So problem asks you to find out what is the product composition. Very simple. 42.4 divided by 140. So you get something like 30.3% of N1. That is C2H6 which is coming out. 28.6% of your C2H4 is coming out. 26.7% of your N3. That is hydrogen which is coming out. And N4 is 3.7% and your inodes form 10.7% of the product. Okay? So very simple. You could solve it. If you had not used your concept of extents of reaction, then you might would have got confused how to use uh, the two information which was given and which was uh, what? Fractional uh, yield and conversion. Okay? Uh, but this approach it makes the problem very simple if you are handling more than one reaction because directly you can use um, this concept of extent of reaction and quickly calculate all your uh, product stream and the composition of the product stream. Okay, so it becomes easy. One small part of this question it asks you to find out the selectivity of ethylene and uh, selectivity of ethylene to methane. Okay, so selectivity is what the amount of desired product upon amount of undesired product. So desired product is N2. Undesired product is N4. So my selectivity will be equal to N2 divided by N4. So my selectivity is basically 40. Uh, yes, N2 is 40. So selectivity is 40 divided by 5.2. So selectivity comes out to be 7.7. .7. So there you solve the problem. Okay. So I hope you understood the concept of yield and selectivity in this video and um, we will take more problems, uh, unsolved problems from Felder and Himmelblau as we go along and use these concepts. Um, so uh, thanks for watching my video and if you have not subscribed till now, please go and subscribe to my channel and if this is useful, please like. Um, hit the like button that really motivates me a lot to make more such videos and hit the bell icon for more updates and thanks for watching once again thank you very much